It's gorgeous up here. You'll never see anything, you know, in the water other than what belongs there. The north coast of Maine is the scenic backdrop for a rare kind of harvest. You see that nice honey colored right up through here? The crop here is seaweed, and for nearly two decades now, Ron Hinkle has made a living carefully pruning the plants in these waters. It's kind of like, you could think of it kind of like a garden, is the more I the cut it and keep it clean and, and, and nipped up, the, the better and the better the seaweed is every year. You know, it's better and better. It comes and goes by names like digitata, laver, dulse, and bladderack. As many as eight types of seaweed are native to this stretch of the Atlantic coast. Last year we harvested 100,000 pounds of this stuff to get 10,000 dried pounds at the end. That's a lot of work too, you know. Hinkle does the heavy lifting, but it was the failing health of this man's wife yeah, that turned these sea vegetables right. into a business. We discovered it one day at a picnic down by the beach. Seaweed was one of the dietary changes suggested for his wife, but imported seaweed was costly. So Shep Earhart took a chance on sea vegetables from the waters of Maine. Luckily, somebody said, well, you know, why don't you change your diet and see what happens? And uh, we started eating seaweed and it made all the difference. This admitted hippie of the 60s pioneered drying technique and sold his first batches by word of mouth in brown paper bags. As the business grew, Maine Coast Sea Vegetables found itself shipping seaweed across the U.S. and overseas. But the seaweed became more of a passion when we realized that there are a lot of people in the cities who don't have access to this that really appreciate it and find it a vital part of their diet. Asian countries have touted the benefits of seaweed for thousands of years, and many who consume sea vegetables claim significant health benefits. As the seaweed sold, the company began exploring other options to make their sea-based food products palatable to a wider audience. This is kelp mixed with sesame seeds and brown rice syrup. They call it a kelp crunch bar. This is applewood smoked seaweed think beef jerky. And then you have a seaweed seasoning, a sort of low sodium salt shaker from the sea. Kelp in soups is a no brainer. It adds its richness. If you're cooking it, you know, a bean soup or a, even a stew, uh, put a little bit of kelp in there. It's like putting pork in your beans. As in any farming operation, producers pay attention to sustainability. It's a lesson Ron Hinkle learned the hard way after one of his early harvests. We overcut it, you know, because it was just too easy. You know, oh, there's a big bunch right here. We'll just cut it in the next year. Nothing. And it was six or seven years before it ever come back. Creating the right environment for future harvests demands cooperation from everyone who works these waters. It's a, a common myth that your fisherman isn't interested in sustainability. And we've been able to use word of mouth and actually create a sustainable harvest up and down the coast of a lot of different varieties of seaweed. At Maine Coast Sea Vegetables, sustainability is a pursuit by sea and by land. That's a pretty nice piece, nice and clear. Earhart says his desire to provide quality, user-friendly foods demands a balance with goals that focus on people and the planet. It's true, we sell to Europe, we sell to California. That's not our long-term strategy. We really would like to be feeding our local people and uh, keep our product as local as we can because it makes a lot of dollars and cents.